Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and today I wanted to answer a question that I've gotten a lot over email, which is, how do you send Ether to a smart contract? And this is a question I've, yeah, I've gotten several times because people want to know basically how do you do this whenever you're building a crowd sale or an ICO, and so that's what I want to talk about today, and a couple different things that surround that topic. So before we jump into all that, um, just be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see more videos like this where I show you how to build you know, smart contracts and write Solidity and develop decentralized applications on Ethereum. All right, so let's kind of dig into this question a little bit. So I'll pull up some code here. Um, I'll pull up a crowd sale smart contract that uh, I've written in a previous tutorial. This basically is, you know, a smart contract that uh, handles a crowd sale of an ERC-20 token on Ethereum, um, or an ICO if you're, you know, if you're familiar with it from that way, um, or a token sale, depending on, you know, what you want to call it. So in this token sale, um, this smart contract has uh, kind of, you know, two main functions. It allows people to buy an ERC-20 token in the crowd sale, and it allows, you know, an admin to end the sale. And, you know, if you've seen this other video uh, where I built this thing out, now I have an eight-hour tutorial where I show you how to build your own ERC-20 token on Ethereum and, you know, uh, purchase it in a crowd sale, you know, hold an ICO. Um, so be sure, be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Um, but, you know, in that video, we built this, you know, buy tokens function to basically allow someone to purchase the ERC-20 token. And, you know, we built a website that allows you to, um, you know, interact with the token sale or the crowd sale and, you know, enter as many tokens as you'd like and, you know, purchase them with a form right here. And, you know, this requires you to have MetaMask installed and, you know, you would submit this transaction um, in order to purchase the tokens. And that was sort of our, you know, model uh, crowd sale that we built that way. So... A lot of people have asked me, like, you know, so how do you do this if you didn't want to, you know, build a form, um, you know, if you didn't want people to purchase these tokens like this without having to call the buy tokens uh, function, like, how would you do that? Um, and the answer is you want to be able to send Ether directly to the smart contract um, to like, call this function directly. So I'll kind of explain that a little bit. Um, you know, people, the reason people ask me this is, uh, a lot of production ICOs, uh, a lot of production, uh, crowd sale websites don't have a form like this where you enter the amount of tokens you want to purchase. Um, instead, you know, a lot of them will have a, uh, in different, different phases uh, of the ICO where, you know, tokens will cost a different amount, you know, they'll be uh, cheaper at the beginning, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, as it goes up, the token price will change. And um, instead of having a, a form right here where you would, you know, um, purchase the tokens, you might uh, have to be compliant with your crowd sale. You might have to do like a KYC registration or something like that and effectively uh, you wanna hide this uh, area to purchase the tokens from people who haven't registered. Um, you, know, you might have to go through that registration in order to uh, get into an area where you can actually interact with the smart contract and purchase the tokens because businesses just have to know that kind of information in order to comply with regulations. Um, and when they get in there, basically people aren't purchasing tokens with a form like this. They're basically seeing a smart contract address and, you know, sending either to the smart contract uh, with something like MetaMask or My Ether Wallet. And they're not actually interacting with the smart contract on the website. The smart contract, you know, is just on Ethereum and they give you the smart contact address and um, essentially you just send either to the contract in order to purchase tokens or invest in the crowd sale, um, by some other means like that. Um, so I'll show you an example, you know, we can look at, you know, maybe a production ICO, this is ICO bench. If you ever want to browse, um, you know, popular ICOs, it's a good, good resource. 
Um, so let's just take a look at one. Um, we'll just pick one here. Let's say, um, let's do this red cab. All right, so we'll go to the red cab ICO. And, all right, so the token sale is live. Uh, you know, it's got this countdown timer here. Um, Pre-sale, crowd sale, hard cap, uh, progress meter. So we're going to buy tokens. Um, so, you know, they're, they're saying you can join the whitelist or buy tokens. Um, we'll click this. And, right, this takes us to a new page uh, with the smart contract address. And it says, you know, we're in tier three of the crowd sale that lasts for these dates. Um, and this is the, you know, Ether redemption rate. So basically, like, um, this is the smart contract address for this crowd sale. So it was different about this crowd sale is right. Here's a smart contract address that you just send ether to, and that purchases the tokens for you. You're not using a form like this to say, you know, I want 10 tokens or I want a hundred thousand tokens. Um, you you specify the amount of ether that you want to send. And, you know, based on what tier you are in the crowd sale, that's how many tokens you'll get. So uh, how would you do that? How would you write that in a smart contract? How would you uh, have a way for you know your smart contract to know all that kind of information and purchase tokens? Well, I will show you. So yeah, here's our um, you know smart contract that we wrote. It has you know the buy tokens function and end sell. So essentially, what we want to do is have a way for our smart contract to um, purchase tokens with uh, this function right here whenever, um, you know, Ether is sent. And we can do that by creating a function that's going to get called whenever Ether is sent to this smart contract. So essentially what you would want to do is, uh, you know, create a function that gets called whenever Ether is sent to the smart contract. And we do that like this. You say function. Um, and you basically just give it, you know, an, an empty function with no name. And this function is going to uh, get triggered. Uh, when we, say, we have to say it's external and payable. All right. And basically, uh, whenever you send Ether to this contract, this function is going to get called because it's external. Um, you know, it's available to the public interface, and it is payable. It's a function that you know accepts Ether. And so, basically, what we'll do is we'll wrap this by tokens uh, function, and yeah, we're basically just going to. Um, call it whenever ether sent to this contract so basically you know this function whenever we call it the console is going to have some metadata uh it's going to have access to the the global object msg or message it's going to have msg.sender right which is the person sending ether to the contract and it's going to have msg.value which is the amount of way the amount of you know ether essentially that's getting sent uh, because this is payable and you know if we were going to actually do this and design this contract to accept ether like this we probably want to refactor this buy tokens function a little bit um but for now i can just show you how to uh i can just show you like how you could pass this in you could say um we'll say how will we calculate the number of tokens we could say you basically have to say like you know msg dot uh, value, um, you know, the amount of ETH that's getting sent, you know, this function accepts the number of tokens. So you would want to like divide that, I guess, by the uh, token price. Um, but this is not safe. I, you know, I would use, you know, we, for this previous tutorial, we pulled in a multiply function, um, that was, you know, kind of structured off of like safe math video, uh, safe math library. So you'd want to have something simpler. You'd want like a safe, multi safe divide, or you could, um, you know, divide this yourself, uh, uh, safely, but I don't really think we have that at this point. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I, if I were going to re- rewrite, I would have basically rewrite how this works uh, to accomplish what I'm going to do. Um, and that's kind of more than I'd really plan to do for the video today. I kind of want to just answer this question for a lot of people who have asked me. Um, so instead of like refactoring this whole thing to show you exactly how it would work, uh, I kind of want to just give you the high level overview of what you would do um, to, you know, build a crowd sale smart contract um, that would accept uh, a token, you know, purchase like this, where you could just send Ether to the smart contract and it would actually buy tokens and go through the whole thing. So this is, you know, loosely based off of, you know, the uh, crowd sale that I've built out my previous tutorials. And so I kind of wanted to just uh, build off of something you guys have probably already seen before and show you how you could change it yourself um, for, you know, another, another way. And so maybe I'll, um, do some more videos about how you could build a crowd sale in a couple different ways. So if you guys are interested in that and kind of seeing more videos about how to build crowd sales and seeing more videos about ERC 20 tokens and what you can do with them, just let me know down in the comments below. Um, yeah. And also while I'm here, I wanted to mention something about this function, right? So you can s- yeah, this is a function that's going to get called anytime Ether is sent to a smart contract. So if this weren't a crowd sale and it was some other type of smart contract, you know, say you just want to deploy um, another smart contract you'd written to you know Ethereum, and people are sending Ether around, right? So sometimes, like, what happens if you you accidentally sent Ether to a smart contract that you didn't mean to, right? Or you built a smart contract that's on the blockchain and somebody sends Ether to it uh, accidentally, you know, potentially that you, potentially those funds can be locked in a smart contract that no one could ever get back. Um, or, um, you know, it might go to someone that you didn't intend for it to. And this happens. Um, so sometimes people like want to implement safeguards in their smart contracts, and you can basically um, do that inside here. You could have like a, a, like a safety refund, um, and you can implement that like this. Basically, you know, so Solidity has access to this global uh, object in MSG. It's the message. The function metadata that's called whenever um, you, know, you pass in metadata to the function. And we should sender, uh, you know, is the address of uh, the person who's calling this function. And we say you know, transfer, um, you know, transfer basically, you know, sends either from one account to an, you know, to this account. Um, and we just say MSG dot value, and that basically issues a refund. Um, now they're going to lose their gas costs, but <laughs> it, you know, if someone accidentally is trying to send, you know, hundred ether and they sent to this contract by mistake, this, uh, basically would refund, um, all the ether back to them so that it wouldn't get locked in this contract or, you know, if it's, a, if it's a crowd sale like this, it wouldn't <laughs> accidentally buy tokens. Um, so yeah, that's something else that I wanted to, you know, show that's a use for this function. Um, and really, you can use this function for anything you want to. You can um, do all kinds of stuff with a, a default function for the contract um, that is payable. Uh, so yeah, hope that was helpful. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos about crowd sales and more videos about uh, these types of smart contracts and what you can do with them, just let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, like I said, I was trying to do this video today just to answer a question that people ask me a lot. Um, So yeah, I hope that helped and until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.